Alright, hello there, and welcome back. Today we're going to be carving a uh, pipe, tobacco pipe. And uh, this one is a piece of pear. Uh, this kit comes from Mr. Brog, and they are out in Poland. Uh, you can get, get this kit in various places. These are the kits that are made out of other pieces of wood, and uh, most of them are going to be pretty pretty hard and gnarly to carve. I uh, wasn't real sure if this was going to be possible, but it totally was. Um, it takes a lot of time, and so we're not going to be seeing the whole carving today. Um, this video is brought to you in part by viewers like you. Very specifically, a nice fellow named Jim. And thank you, Jim. Here's your video. So here you can see I'm sketching this out. Kind of had the uh, dimensions kind of roughly out. Um, it's not. It wasn't completely like true, and the dimensions weren't exactly on there. And the the bowl was also really big. So um, if you just kind of want to use the geometric shapes that I kind of did and use the face for um, and I'll, I'll do I'll put an illustration link in uh, in the description uh, if you want to like print that out or get a look at it um, still and in two dimensions um, and besides that because I can't show this whole carving because it just took too much time and uh, I didn't even record all of it because for for parts at the end I just I had to sit down and really commit to it um, and, and you need to keep that in mind if you do this. Um, so there, there's another video uh, I did called Knife Only Wood Spirit. And um, and that's about 30 minutes. I, you see the whole thing. And so you'll be able to see the shapes and the cuts that I use. <clears throat> Again, the um, you know for those cuts, I do a V-cut to take out an eye socket or something. And on when you go to this harder wood, you'll be, you know, it'll be a lot of cuts to take out that that piece but you still want to keep in mind that kind of uh, more simple geometry so it doesn't get too muddy on there so you also want to take the uh, the top into consideration as I said this is a very big bowl it was um, over three quarters of an inch and stick my thumb in there um, so you want to uh, you know kind of get a I was a little off on this I wanted to make it a little bit wider on the front um, and you want a little bit of safety zone because you want to think about say on this one like the eyes probably going to be the deepest so I want to like kind of visualize that because I won't be able to see that from the top but I want to keep in mind how deep that is you can kind of keep using your fingers as kind of calipers you could actually probably use some um, but you don't want to you want to leave a little bit of space even in that um, you know you're going to be maybe sanding in some places or um, you know you may want to clean up your cut and you'll end up going too deep so just keep that in mind you know you want to have a, a bare minimum somewhere in there um, I'm not really sure what mine was it can you know it kind of depends on where it is you can have it a little bit thinner on the top than the, the bottom and again this one's not just it's not just a wide bowl it's very deep it's um, really really deep so I don't know I guess I could have shortened it but no, I, I mean I need all that space for this uh, for this face, and um, he, he looks kind of short faced anyway. But uh, you know, I, I had to get some of that beard in on the bottom, and a little bit of beard. I mean, uh, not beard, hair, on the top, so it didn't just look like a Viking or bald guy. Um, which I kind of considered because I'd done some bald spirits and I really like them, but it just it, it it wouldn't have communicated well, and so I'm happy with the way it turned out. So you can see here when I'm going into these parts, I'm just Again, I'm doing a lot of cuts to make up a V cut, um, but in this specific case, I actually in the first part of this carving, my the tip of my knife was damaged, and um, so I actually did not have to suffer as badly as I did. Um, this wood, this pear wood, is um, it's not straight grained; it's wavy grained, and um, most woods that are going to make good pipe bowls are not going to be real great carving woods. This, I mean, we weren't sure if this was going to be possible, but you know, it definitely was, absolutely. But um, it's not basswood, you know. It's um, it's a little bit gnarly, and um, so you don't just go straight with the grain. Um, if you're making a, a cut that's really with it, it'll it'll split because it's so tough that if you get your knife in there, it'll have linear strength and it'll end up prying itself out in front of your knife before you cut it and uh, you won't be in control of the cut and uh, it'll it'll split all the way down so you want to watch that and so what you do to, to stay away from that is if you're going with the grain directly with the grain then you'll 
tilt your knife a little bit or cheat the cut so that you're going a little bit sideways with the grain or you're going a little bit down um, so sometimes you maybe need to make a lot of cuts to make up one cut a lot you know like safe is uh, straight with it you know you could make a bunch of uh, small down cuts to make up the long linear cut I don't know anyway um, so here I'm shaping out the face again it's all just with these you know kind of V cuts and then doing a little bit of shaping um, again ch please check out that video of um, you know the knife only wood spirit and that one also has some illustrations uh, that are you can get on my blog it's a direct link to the pictures there's no ads or anything um, but just uh, some dynamic descriptions of what these shapes are that you're trying to get out for this face um, it's it, it's not too bad this one I'm again the other problem with the the taping is that I didn't really know what I was doing you know I've done faces before and all that but um, I really wanted it to turn out nice and um, you know the, sh the size and everything I just didn't know and what will happen when I'm carving like that is I'll go from one place to the to another and um, so it's it's just not like a, as easy to understand to learn from because you know I'm just taking a shave off here and a shave off there and um, so again that's another good reason to check out the other video and um, maybe practice yourself on another piece uh, that's larger or maybe even the same size but um, I definitely recommend this and you know again just um, you know if you're making a pipe probably a, a smoker yourself and uh, you know just uh, commit you know like uh, 20 to 50 bowls for for doing working on this and uh, take your time and relax and enjoy it and if it if it starts if it just turns out too bad you know um, then just smooth the whole thing out you know or go for a very basic design and um, it'll it'll turn out awesome you know you sand it and polish it up and uh, it'll it'll be real nice. So I, I would suggest even doing that with um, with one of these kits. Yeah, the, um, I've smoked out of this a little bit, and it's uh, it's been fine. I've made a few other bowls out of other woods. Um, you know, as long as they're pretty hard and dense, um, they'll be fine. Um, I think people are starting to kind of realize that briar is not the only wood, and uh, it, it's not necessarily better than. Uh, other types of woods or say corn um, and yeah I mean I I hate that it's kind of it's devalued because it's not briar that is just like perception that that's the nice thing um, but anyway uh, I, yeah I'd suggest doing one of these even if you're not gonna do a face on it you just do the design um, don't underestimate the power of, of polishing and doing carnauba wax. So we're working on the face here, getting this stuff out. Um, one of the things that happened here that you don't really see is that after I kind of got the face on there, you can see that I'm doing it a little bit. Um, I, I needed to just get the face in there, um, kind of put the, the features on, and but it's, it's he's still kind of a block face, you see that? And so at some point I really curved it around and in doing that uh, I basically curve everything off um, except for the nose and right at the front of the brow and um, it basically takes all the features off and you have to redo the face but that usually you know, kind of brings the carving to a whole another level um, so when I don't know what I'm doing exactly you know I'll, it's just kind of what I do I'll, I'll do a shallow face to kind of feel a little more confident and then you know I'll maybe do a few more passes and make it more developed and more three-dimensional but you know if you're doing a face um, you know and, and you, you think you're done look at it again you know and see you know if you could uh, go a little bit more dynamic with it uh, most likely the more work you do on it and the more you develop all the lines and the more depth and round over features, the, the better it's going to look. So, yeah, that, I, mean, I wasn't real sure how I was going to finish this thing. That was another issue. Um, I've done kind of similar instances where I really like sand uh, my carvings or, and I'll put a finish on there or whatnot. 
Um, but with with hair, it's a bit difficult. It's not just like a rusticated pipe. Um, it's not just that the crevices are deep and they're so narrow that you can't get anything in there to polish them up or sand them or anything. But um, the the peaks are also like on the hair. It's going to be so um, small that um, any kind of sanding or even polishing is going to take that down dramatically. That wood is going to change the shape of it and the look of it. Um, and that goes for the eyes and anything. I mean, a, a very small peak on a, a, a wood carving is just going to disappear. So um, in the end, I decided to um, just go f go for the, the details and skip the sanding on all of it and um, and basically just do the polishing, which, which really did bring it down. But it ended up being a nice look. So there, there you can see I'm doing the bottom of the mustache. And uh, again, just using that uh, V cut of the two 45 degree angle type cuts, slowly getting that out of there. Um, on this piece, um, his mustache right there, it's a little bit too, it's not enough of the lower beard, is what I'm trying to say. Um, so I, I make it kind of a handlebar mustache, I flange it out a little bit um, so that you can see more lower beard. If it was a bigger piece of wood, it wouldn't be a problem because you'd see so much beard. And your brain would say, oh, this is, um, you know, he's not just a mustache guy. I, what is that guy's name with the guns in the Bugs Bunny cartoons? The Sam something? He'd look, like, he look, he'd look like that. So I handlebar him up so that there's more information that uh, he's got lower beard. And you, you see there on, like, the top of his head, too, it's also, like, there's not much there, but it, it's enough to suggest there's... He's got a full head of hair kind of deal, kind of wood spirit-ish, but it does kind of also look like he's, I don't know, it looks like his hair is combed down, combed back, especially after it gets curved around. I don't know. Anyway, so you can see I'm struggling with that there, a piece of wood. So you saw earlier, um, I had that little bottle of spray. That's my alcohol mix. Um, it's uh, rubbing alcohol, like 50% rubbing alcohol, 50% water. Uh, this rubbing alcohol is like a 70%. So if you have a lower, maybe add more. It's not an exact science, um, but it works really well to get make the wood a little bit smoother. Cuts a little bit easier, and it also just uh, kind of changes the mechanism of the cut. So if you're having tear outs and stuff, and it just seems like it's carving rough, then try that out. And um, you know, you just kind of wait a few seconds for it to get in there. It goes pretty fast because the alcohol. Um, you don't want to soak it in there, but you can be pretty liberal with the spray bottle. And I'm kind of getting his cheek out and stuff. Um, we, I mean, you could definitely use some power tools in the carving of these. Um, again, because, uh, you know, I didn't exactly know what I was doing. Uh, I just wanted to go kind of slow because with power tools, you know, you can tend to go, go to, you know, take off too much wood, take it off in the wrong shape or something. Um, but there's a number of tools. If you, if you haven't carved any wood with... Uh, you know, like rotary tool stuff. You want the 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 bits that have um, very uh, a lot of gaps in the teeth because the pieces fill up. Um, you know, like they look like router bits and stuff like that. Was, okay, so right here you can see I'm drawing on. What I decided to do was kind of have him look like he was wrapped around a regular pipe. So I'll take at that point I'll have his hair go down that curve right there, and then that line back there is you know he'll look like a like that part will be regular pipe basically um, to kind of have a nice little contrast also wanted uh, this pipe to be usable and it to be light you know enough to like hold it in your mouth without it you know breaking your teeth out and so that that's a good way to do that so there there you can see I've taken off most of that wood and um, got it pretty round in the back so it's kind of some the same from the front I've worked on them a little bit more I've also done his hair on one side, and um, there you can see the hair on one side is done, and um, you can see the back is like kind of a basic, uh, looks like a regular pipe. Still got a lot of work to make it, you know, uh, actually 
round and soft and it was a bit difficult because of these kind of his hair wings that are going off in the back there and also that that curve it was it was pretty hard to get in there and I should have probably done a better job you know you never really know until you get to that stain or you get to the higher grits and um, you know you start to see those lines in there little imperfections but it was really hard to do that um, you can see here it's it's not super easy I can't put a lot of pressure on there because uh, those wings so maybe there'd be a better design to to get around that um, so I'll show you how I'm doing the hair I I don't know I, I did the hair with like kind of V cuts but I wonder if there's a way to do uh, with like a dark stain like you could just do a single cut and the stain would get in there and, uh, and you could buff around it and that line would become dark and uh, everything else would lighten up and that would be good enough so um, I'll experiment with that later I really need to um, I didn't take a lot of chances with the stain. I kind of tried a little bit of stuff, but you know, I didn't. It took so long. Um, so I, I'll maybe try to get some more stain colors and some more pear wood. Oh, it doesn't really need to be pear wood; just anything. I, I've, I have some tilia cordata, which is a little leaf linden, which is pretty similar to this. But anyway, um, you can see there. I just did the lines at first through there, um, but now I'll go through with the V cut get these things out. The hair was one of the biggest reasons why I did this off camera, a lot of this off camera. <clears throat> Besides just the time reason, um, I really needed to um, like get my face really close to this, be in a comfortable position and take my time with it. And when I'm doing these videos, I'm not in a normal position, normal place and um, I have to keep my head out of the way. I don't know, whatever. And you know, there's a little bit of pressure also on the cameras on. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it, it, this was very labor intensive. Not just labor intensive, because the whole thing is labor intensive. But you got to be on point when you're doing the hair. And I don't have really steady hands, so I needed to do that. So that's you, so you saw that there. That was really kind of the whole key to the the hair is doing that. You just do a little bit of curve, not too much, and it'll look really messy. You can see on these, they don't look real great, but that kind of there's little imperfections in the not steady V, the ongoing V cut there. Um, after it gets, you know, you get all of them in there um, and it gets finished and stuff, it'll it'll give a really nice movement to it, nice natural look of hair. And when you're curving these and they like say get too far apart, then you just do another short one that starts. You know, you kind of fill in that Y shape with another one, and that'll look good. So there you can see I've finished it all now pretty much. And I've done both sides. And in a few places I kind of have the hair go in. Um and you can kind of wave. You don't have like flat spots. You see there I have like a part there kind of and a little indentation. So that it's not just wavy up and down on a you know axis, but on two axes. So this is <clears throat> anyway. Um so this was another um I basically, I had to get into the rotary tool stuff to do the finishing. I'm not sure if you could do the buffing and stuff without this. Um, this is kind of an. These are weird little um, brushes, these things. They're like these little radial brushes. Um, you can get them from 3M. They make them in a bunch of different grits. Dremel, the company, does make them, but they're really, really expensive. So get on eBay and look up 3M radial brush things. I don't know what they're called. They have a bunch of different colors and grits. Um, and they're really good for stuff like this and getting little places. And then there was also these weird little like kind of almost like steel wool discs. I don't know what they're called either. I'm pretty helpful, aren't I? Um, and I, I did a lot of that too. Um, and I did do a lot by hand um, because those all those finishing discs for the rotary tools, I mean, they, they go really quick. So whenever I could, I'd just use the sandpaper, have some high grits. Uh, here I'm ready to stain. I've got a rubber band wrapped around a piece of wood to fill this up. Turned out not to be really necessary. Just be careful with it. I've got a little thing to hold on to, but that wasn't really necessary either. Um, I'm doing this out of camera frame. There we go. Putting some on his forehead there. Um, this stain, it's a leather stain, leather dye. Um, it's uh, called Tan Desert or something like that. Kind of a funny color. Um, we were actually doing leather work and the, they were, the stains were just so dark that we got this one and turned out well. 
Um, it's a bit funny on this. Uh, I wasn't so sure, but after it got finished, I, I really like it. It's a unique color, and um, it's very easy to make faces and wood carvings too dark. They'll look good when you're in the light and stuff, and then you'll look at them later and just be like, man, it is too dark. So you're not going to want to use the same colors that people are making most of the pipes out of. Um, this is watered down too, very watered down. I did a lot of coats, get it even. Uh, one of the issues with staining wood that is not uh, like burl is that um, it, it all takes stain differently. Whether it's, um, if it's against the grain, you know, it's like the end grain or curvature of, of grain, um, it's going to it's gonna suck in more of that stain than others. So it was a little blotchy. It took a while to get it, get it right. And um, this is what I did to polish it up after the stain dried. I had a little felt wheel on the rotary tool. And, uh, you know, I did the, uh, the different crayons of the buffing, polishing grits, and, um, and then did some wax. I think I am on wax now. I'm not really sure. I didn't do a lot of wax because, again, I wanted to go a little bit easy with all the stuff because uh, it couldn't be everywhere. I didn't want to get it too inconsistent. And at his forehead here, it got a little bit too much at some point. Oh, no, I, I still am with the tripoli. I don't know what it's called. It's not tripoli. It's the gold, I think, at that point. Um, it got a little bit too shiny in some places. I saw it was getting like that, so I kind of had to, like, sheen it down a little bit. Um, and I went, So I went in afterwards with just, like, a clean um, T-shirt cloth and, um, and just kind of rubbed all the areas down. So I don't think I'd want to do a whole lot of, you know, any more coating than this has already he's very glossy already so um, there's really not much wax on there I think I ended up getting most of it off oh so this was another issue is that um, everything like all of the the polishes and the wax they all have like a color and they were getting in the crevices and not coming out so I was having to use the toothbrush a lot and there was still a little bit in there uh, it's kind of an issue but there you have it there he is um, yeah, I really like the color. I think it works out well. And you can see it it's a little bit contrasty in like the hair and stuff where the color got a little bit buffed out. Nice little look there. And uh, there's a little chunk there I missed. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. Um, again, check out that other video and practice that a little bit. Uh, links in the description. There's also, I'll give you a few illustration links to help you out with this. And uh, we'll see some pictures of it. I smoked out of this. Works great. And if you guys want one of these, contact me. Email will be in the description. Uh, what do you think I should charge, guys? No, but uh, if you guys want to do this project, you have any questions, or you want some moral support, or you want to show me what you did, what you made, uh, feel free to contact me. And I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this. I know I did. Carve safe, guys. Mm -hmm.